Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about pride and prejudice and zombies? Stick around and find out. Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions here with my uncut review of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Uh, now, this is based on the Jane Austen classic Pride and Prejudice, which I don't have much experience with. I've seen the A&E movie version once, maybe twice, as in addition to little bits I've walked in on now and then as my wife is watching it. Uh, but I wanted to give this one a go. First, I'll give you my thoughts, and then I'm going to bring on a special guest that's going to share her thoughts. Um, First off, uh, let me give you the synopsis. In the, I want to say like the 1800s in England, uh, there's like all the, the aristocratic class social struggles going on, people trying to kind of make their way and get, get a name for themselves in society and marry well and all that kind of crap. And, uh, but in the midst of that, in the last like 100 years, a zombie plague has broken out in England. And so they're having to kind of adjust their way of life and, and the, the skills and attributes that are valued in a, in a young potential bride have changed. Uh, and so they're not, you know, focusing on the same elements of refinement as they might normally. Instead, they're having to train in martial arts and weaponry and stuff like that. And so it's this, uh, it's the, the class struggle and trying to marry well and all that kind of stuff is still going on. But at the same time, they're trying to deal with this whole zombie outbreak. And in the midst of that, you have... Elizabeth Bennet, uh, who is, her mother wants her to marry well because uh, they're basically not going to be able to keep on to the keep hold of the family fortune once their her father passes away, and then you've got uh, her sisters that are also trying to marry well, but the main focus is on Elizabeth, and then you've got I think his first name is William Darcy or Mister Darcy as he's most often called, uh, who is part of the military trying to fight off the zombies, and uh, he's just very a grumpy, grumbly man and seems to be. Uh, you know, very prideful and uh, meddling where he shouldn't and stuff. And, and so we're just kind of watching this relationship uh, that's based largely on misunderstanding kind of unfold between Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth. Um, the story, let's talk about the story script and pacing just really briefly. This is a weird experience because it's, um, it does have zombies in it. Uh, and it's got lots of cool elements of zombie you know movies and it de and there's definitely lots of you know action that kind of breaks up the the relationship uh, class struggle drama that's going on um, but it's largely I think a more about the drama side of things if I were to kind of uh, describe it a little bit differently I would say this is a movie that a Pride and Prejudice fan takes a zombie fan to so that they will stomach and sit through Pride and Prejudice it is not, I don't think, um, a zombie movie that a zombie fan takes a Pride and Prejudice fan to so that they will sit through a zombie movie. I think that the, the story uh, hangs a lot more on the relationship drama than it does on the impending zombie threat. Uh, so it's so for me because I'm not really into you know the, the whole class struggle type of drama and also because I'm fairly familiar these days with the Pride and Prejudice story there were times when I wished that like oh I wish that this was a different story because I was watching it I was like okay now they're gonna do this beat from Pride and Prejudice and now they're gonna do this beat and this beat and this beat and I was just kinda watching to see what they changed and what was interesting about that rather than really feeling invested in in the story but I wonder if someone who's not familiar with Pride and Prejudice but some somehow finds themselves watching this movie uh, because of maybe someone who is a fan of Pride and Prejudice, I wonder if they would engage more with the character story uh, than I did just because of my familiarity with it. Um, the the cast I thought was uh, really pretty solid. Um, I'm used to seeing kind of the A&E version of Pride and Prejudice uh, and those characters I think are are a, a more extreme in kind of like their behavior um, with the exception of maybe um, Parson uh, Call. Collins, Parson Collins. I thought that um, Matt Smith did a great job as uh, Mr. Collins in this one, and I, I, I would rank his performance right up there with the guy, you know, the greasy-haired dude who does him in the in the A and E special. He was a, he was great comic relief, so he was kind of like the standout for me. The rest of the people are all kind of fairly subdued and stuff like that, you know. So it's uh, uh, it's not like really varied in terms of volume of in, and range of performances, but I thought for what they were doing, they all brought a nice 
you know, prim and proper subtlety, you know, to uh, to the whole thing, um, in both the serious and the humorous moments. Uh, the stunts and visuals, they were great. I mean, this it's a zombie movie, so I mean, that's the I don't I don't think that the, the standard is super high there, but uh, I really enjoyed what they did. I enjoyed uh, the the like the deaths of zombies and kind of you know they were you know fit, fitfully gruesome and stuff like that. Sometimes shocking and surprising and made me jump, you know. And uh, there's some great head explosions. A couple of them that just like made me kind of jump. They were were so sudden and took me off guard. Um, so I thought, like, as far as like that stuff goes, it was it was enjoyable. Um, let's see. Are, are there any like themes or philosophical ideas, you know, that that might uh, that might come to mind or to conversation as a result of watching this movie? <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think so. Um, I mean, I think there's that 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 theme of you know not judging a book by its cover and how we should really endeavor to understand each other before we decide you know how we're going to feel about somebody and that's uh, that's become more and more relevant to me as I've been getting uh, more and more involved with, with just kind of internet type stuff especially getting on YouTube is you know people will come and they'll seem to be a certain way when they give their comments and they'll seem to be kind of abrasive and stuff like that um, but I think if we withhold judgment and try to understand where someone is coming from a little bit more then we might understand oh you know they're being abrasive because they've been hurt or because such and such happened in their life or whatever and uh, uh, and I think that there's uh, if we can just give each other some grace instead of really quickly passing judgment even when someone's being abrasive toward us I think there's potential for for connection and and uh, good relationship there in the future um, but again I don't think that's a theme that's naturally gonna pop out to a lot of people it's just something that I guess comes to mind for me and and maybe for other people that are kind of interested in purposefully looking and searching for themes that they can uh, reflect on in uh, as they look at their own lives after you know enjoying something like this um, so anyway those are my basic thoughts now I want to bring on my wife Holly be nice internet because she's shy and I, it took a lot of uh, convincing to get her to do this she doesn't like talking on the phone or and certainly not on camera um, but she is a, uh, a Pride and Prejudice fan um, what's your like what's your background with Pride and Prejudice. Is it more with the book or with the classic A and E TV series? It is largely, mostly based on the A and E series. Okay. Uh, I've only read the book once. Okay. Um, and that was because I loved the A and E movie so much. And how often do you watch that A and E series <laughs> all the way through? Probably about once a year. Yeah. And as it happens, you just—I mean, you didn't even know this movie was coming out, but you were just—you just watched through it about a week ago, the yep. whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's what was your general reaction? I mean, you knew the title, you know, so you knew ha kind of what you were in for. And you're not like a a zombie fan no. in particular. <laughs> um, what was, what was your general reaction to the experience? It's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love how they kind of stuck with the Pride and Prejudice story, um, but the things that changed because of the zombiness of it, for the most part, needed to change in the story, so to make that zombie part make sense. Okay. So, so what, what changes come to mind that are either just interesting to you or that were funny because of how they, you know, changed the, the original story? Um... Well, just that the the women were now they were all warriors, and uh, they were they you could tell they grew up being trained to fight, and uh, instead of being all about, you know, the, I think, sorry, sorry if I give spoilers. I don't That's know okay, how, minor I, spoilers. I mean, as long as you don't give away like the ending and like, like who, who lives and dies, yeah. we're good. Yeah. Okay, I'm like I don't know how not to, and yeah, I don't no. know exactly what a spoiler is. So. Yeah, that's okay. All right, good. Um, like the opening scene when with the Bennets, mm -hmm. um, how they're all sitting around in their, you know, in their sitting room or whatever, and they're all cleaning their weapons yeah. <laughs> instead of doing embroidery or <laughs> doing their redoing their bonnets, and um, and so that that's just kind of fun. Like that's that's their world now. And, yeah. Um, so things like that, I think. What was what was kept? that you think was important and that was kind of part of like the the pride and prejudice it's kind of scratched that pride and prejudice itch for you that you that you enjoy from the A&E series maybe th that was retained in this just the whole the whole time period of it being i think it was the i think it's the early 1800s and I, I don't know for sure yeah i'm not but, sure either um but just their 
the way they speak and their prim and properness um, as far as interacting with each other um, and just trying to figure out what's going on there between each other and um, because of how they don't just let it go all out there you know yeah. in in their speech they just they say what's proper and and so yeah I just liked that that carried on through so what was what was maybe lost or changed that was kind of like unnecessary or or that you felt like oh you know they didn't have to do that or lose that or whatever yeah there was um, for the most part I thought it was it was pretty good I, I felt like the story where it needed to ch where it did change it kind of needed to for the for the to add the zombies in but there was one scene in particular that um, when when Darcy proposes for the first time mm -hmm. that I felt like they they ended up physically fighting each other and uh, I didn't think that was necessary in that instance they that it didn't come to that they were it was they mo they could have settled it through their words like they did in the original yeah I noticed that like that like sometimes when there was conflict in the original like A and E series like that was verbal conflict and emotional conflict and stuff like that they would accompany that with physical conflict like you know when she's arguing yeah. with her sisters they're also yes. they're also training you know and fighting each other physically you know and then with uh, uh, Lady Catherine de Bourgh there's kind of like a, a violent exchange in connection with her last encounter with uh, mm -hmm. with that character yeah um, and uh, yeah so and oh and, and also like the snatching of the flies yes. like there was this scene where I think they just were <laughs> wanting to kind of show off um, Elizabeth Bennett's cool like martial arts skills, skills or something uh -huh. yeah, her skills but it was a little over the top for me when she was like snatching flies out of the air anyway it's a little it, Miyagi it was yeah it was very it was very Miyagi I mean not quite chopstick level she was doing it with her fingers yes. but uh, um, okay so finally what would you I mean if if there's someone that's a fan of Pride and Prejudice and someone saying hey you want to go see this with me and they can maybe handle some gore but they don't go seeking that kind of thing out um, would you say this is worth a try or would you say ah the zombie stuff is gonna be a bit you know over the top so I'm um, you know I mean what what would your kind of how would you recommend it with hesitation or qualifiers no, or I what think, would you I think it's fun you know. I think it's I think I am not about zombie movies. I don't. I don't want to go to a movie to really just be scared all the time yeah. or wonder what's going to happen or too much gore. Yeah. Um, but this was. I, th I felt like there were some jumpy moments, um, but it was much more like you said about the the Pride and Prejudice story mm -hmm. and with with a little different, obviously um, added horror to it. Um, but it was more about the story of. Pride and Prejudice and and the relationships in that story and so so if you if you go to it allowing the the story's going to change because of the world they now live in yeah um, and just let them have some fun with that yeah um, and make those changes I think it's just kind of fun to watch yeah so yeah cool. I, I would recommend it cool yeah okay thank you you're free you can Yay. run away <laughs> All right, so those are our thoughts for Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Um, I'd love to kind of get your take on this. Um, and uh, then please do like, share, and subscribe if you want to support us. You can also support us by visiting uh, spiritblade.com and seeing what kind of stuff we have for you there. So I hope you do that. And then I hope you visit us, boom, at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. Click. <laughs>